in the United States, as this gender-motivated crime has not been defined by U.S. legislation despite being a global issue. Shanquella, a 25-year-old student at Winston-Salem State University in North Carolina, died last October while staying in a luxury rental property in the Mexican state of Baja, California, sir. Prosecutors in Mexico are seeking to extradite one of Shanquella's friends as a suspect in the case, and now another lead in the case might have just popped up. A brother to another suspect recently made a statement that got investigators prepping the cross exam according to a Mexican prosecutor and confirmed by ABC News. The FBI has taken quite a serious step in the case of the recently deceased Shanquella Robinson, where an arrest warrant has been issued for the death of Robinson, a Charlotte woman who was killed while on vacation in Mexico. It has been reported that international officials are looking for a friend of Robinson's who is the direct aggressor, according to Daniel De La Rosa Ania, a prosecutor for the state of Baja California, sir, who released an official statement in November. However, the person wanted by authorities has not been named and the warrant has not yet been made public. But that's not all. Take a look. According to Daniel La Rosa Ania, this case is fully clarified. We even have a court order. There is an arrest warrant issued for the crime of femicide to the detriment of the victim and against an alleged perpetrator, a friend of her who is the direct aggressor. Actually, it wasn't a quarrel, but instead a direct aggression. We are carrying out all the pertinent procedures such as the Interpol alert and the request for extradition to the United States of America. It's it's about two Americans, the victim and the culprit. Tonight, authorities in Mexico issuing an arrest warrant in the mysterious death of 25-year-old American tourist Shanquella Robinson. Local officials have not yet named the person, but they're calling them a direct aggressor against the Charlotte native and have initiated a request for extradition from the United Moving on, whether or not an arrest has been made has been the subject of rumors. Nevertheless, local, federal, and Mexican investigators who spoke with Channel 9's Joe Bruno were unable to confirm an arrest had been made in the case. Additionally, an expert on femicide in Mexico, Michael Lettery, said when a woman is slain there, officials are frequently obligated to start the inquiry as a femicide. The next step is to determine if there were any specific circumstances, like domestic violence, or if she was slain for reasons related to her gender. Nevertheless, on November 23rd, ABC News informed Robinson's mother that an arrest warrant had been issued in the case. According to Shanquella's mother, I feel so good, that's a good feeling. That's what we have been waiting for, for someone to finally be held accountable and arrested. I just can't wait for justice to be served. That's right, we are so very glad that this heartbroken family will soon get the closure that they so deserve and have been waiting for. That being said, when mainstream media ignores the death or disappearance of black women, black social media frequently takes the lead in increasing public awareness. And that's exactly what happened here as well. It would have been simple for Shanquella Robinson's death to be overlooked. Her narrative was confined to a few local press pieces for the first two weeks after the 25-year-old from North Carolina was declared deceased while on a group vacation to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. It so appeared that her passing would receive little to no attention from the mainstream media, much like the deaths of several other black women and girls. But after a woman was seen being attacked on camera, word of her passing quickly spread online. History after a trip with friends in Cabo last month, but her death captured the hearts of communities beyond the Queen City. It means a lot to see Charlotte supporting her and her family. I have a daughter, I have nieces. That child was amongst friends and she should have been. A Similarly, Robinson's incident tale has now been covered by major national news outlets like CNN and the New York Times, demonstrating the strength and potential of black media platforms. Black people online have been a driving force in promoting stories of missing and murdered black women and girls in the absence of mainstream media, from the murder of Lauren Smith Fields last year to Robinson quite recently. It is also normally observed that high rates of homicide, sexual assault, and intimate relationship violence affect black women and girls. However, such cases are seldom handled urgently. Then again, Robinson's case is notable for the volume of attention it attracted as a result of not only her family's activism, but also the black-owned websites and social media accounts that were shared the video and newly revealed information, bringing it to the attention of a larger audience. Honestly, it would be fair to say that black media outlets have traditionally been crucial sources of information concerning violence against black people, particularly when mainstream media have ignored their stories due to institutional bias and racism. Examples of this include Ida B. Wells' investigations into lynchings in the South and the black press role in revealing the truth about the murder of Emmett Till. Social media has grown in popularity in recent years, particularly over the last 10 years, as a means of obtaining and disseminating data about social and racial justice. It is where activists, academics, Academics and others have carefully used hashtags and other messages to quickly spread information to the wider public, giving birth to the hashtag Black Lives Matter in 2013. To further shock and raise public awareness, several aspects of Robinson's case also stood out. Her case gained more attention as a result of the video and the conflicting versions of her death. 
Many social media users have expressed confusion over how someone could go with people who appear to be Robinson's friends and then tragically pass away less than 24 hours later in light of the circumstances that have been made public. And let's not forget that Robinson's parents were informed of her death by alcohol overdose by the friends who went with her after they returned back to the United States. Their claims did not square up with the details on her death certificate, which was made public online on November 16. Robinson's death was attributed to severed spinal cord and neck injuries, according to the autopsy report, as there was no reference to alcohol toxicity. The same day, a video of a naked woman being brutally attacked by another woman went viral on Twitter. Robinson's mother has acknowledged the naked woman is her daughter in numerous media publications. Quella, can you at least fight back? A man can be heard shouting in the background of the footage, which also then sent the internet into a frenzy. Mexican officials declared that they were looking into Robinson's death as femicide, the gender-based murder of a woman, after the video was made public. The FBI then acknowledged its involvement in the investigation on November 18. Whereas, regarding the passing of Robinson, a warrant for one person's arrest has been issued in Mexico. Without the distribution of the footage, media and criminal law experts warned the family of the deceased that Robinson's narrative might have gotten lost in a sea of other breaking news across the nation. Additionally to the video, there is a relatability element to Shanquella's brutal death. A lot of people have gone on girls' trips or group vacations, where in this particular case, Robinson's death was undoubtedly the result of violence, which is an unexpected turn of events. On the other hand, black social media, according to Robinson's mother, is responsible for drawing attention to her daughter's situation, she told NBC News. For women of color, particularly black women and girls, who are frequently ignored, such comprehensive coverage is uncommon. According to a study, the news coverage of missing white and black women and girls in 11 U.S. newspapers over a four-year period was examined by various study teams. Black Twitter has been significant in bringing attention to and posing concerns about black women's deaths outside of Robinson's case in light of the biased focus from news media and law enforcement. Initial accounts following the shooting of Breonna Taylor, a 26-year-old EMT, by police in 2020 referred to her as a potential suspect, while several news organizations made no mention of her passing at all. All thanks to Hannah Drake, a writer and activist from Louisville, who assisted in drawing attention to Taylor's passing on social media, which changed the media's portrayal of the circumstances of Taylor's death. On the other hand, black social media users on TikTok emphasized the tale of Lauren Smith Fields, a 23-year-old black woman who was discovered dead in December 2020. 21 after spending the night with an older white guy she had met on the dating app Bumble. The results of Fields' autopsy showed that fentanyl, promethazine, hydroxyzine, and alcohol were the cause of death, but her friends and family insisted that she was not a drug user and urged the authorities to take further action. More widely circulated news agencies started to report on her passing after complaints from black TikTok users about the unequal treatment of white and black victims. However, her lawsuit is still pending. According to various reports, despite increased national discussions about racism towards black women victims, it is of the idea that black social media will continue to be responsible for spreading these stories. That's all for today, though. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Goodbye.